Hello everyone. This is Bill from WilliamWiseArt.com. Uh, this demo that I'm about to do is inspired by an artist named John Hoare. Uh, you can find his video listed below in the comments. Uh, what I hope to convey by this video is one, the simplicity of a gestural sketch. Two, how to use rough tipped tools of any sort uh, to create a, a loose drawing and three, how to do a simple wash in just two steps. Uh, this is my first time at doing this. Uh, it's a little rough, but I will try another very soon. If you like this, please press like. And if you want to see the next one, hit subscribe. Thanks. I hope you enjoy it. Now let's get drawing. Before we start, let's talk about some of the supplies that I have here. Uh, this is uh, different kinds of India ink. One is waterproof, one is water soluble, and uh, this other, this one is, is also waterproof. Um, I use this for like filling my little ink pens. Um, for drawing sticks, I'm going to use this piece of wood, and you can see I carve a little notch in there just trying to figure out if this might work as a, uh, a way to collect ink. Uh, this is a matchstick that John Hoare described. Uh, I just sharpened it with a little bit of a tip on it. Uh, as we'll find I'm gonna like less sharp of a tip. So here I'm just experimenting with the tips and the ink just put in a little cup. Uh, the idea, I think, as I experiment, the ink needs to saturate the tip a little bit in order to uh, make a little bit more saturated. Otherwise, a line, line just dries right out. So I'm just experimenting. And here, I flatten the tip rather than a point. And I can get a little bit of a calligraphy, in more interesting lines. Uh, so I'm going to experiment more with this type of tip. Here we are in Cornucopia. Um, I want to study this image and I want to look for the black lines. It's a gray day, so everything is pretty flat. But look for what is black and what is not black. And that's where we're going to put our ink. Here you can see underneath the roof, underneath the little ledges, and in those kind of details is what we're going to put the ink. Uh, I'm going to use plain old Canson's XL uh, mixed media paper. I like it. It takes a wash pretty well. So I have my monitor in front of me that I'm going to use to draw on. I got my inks handy here. And uh, so let's just start out. So how I approach this is a very loose gestural sketch. Um, I want to put, kind of mark out where on the paper is going to be the frame, the borders. Uh, you can use a viewfinder as a, as a method. So now let's just take a look at this quickly, uh, loosely. This is in live time uh, just kind of block out where on the paper this building and the other elements are going to be nothing's for detail it's only about rough layout very loosely and these pencil marks won't matter a bit once we get some of these main details in and we like the look of it then we're going to start to get a little darker. Okay, now I have the basic layout done. Here's some little bushes, whatever markers for those. Okay, now I am finding the line. In among these scribbles is the actual line. Now I go in for a little bit of detail. Again, this is real time. Uh, I, you don't have to get too detailed here because I'm still going to go in with ink. 
This is just layout lines, correcting my loose gestural starting sketch. A little door and that under, under roof thing, windows, plants. Those edge marks aren't in concrete either. If you were drawing on a paper, you could erase those and make, you know, make corrections. Okay, so now we get our ink out. Now, in this case, I didn't go only for the darks, but let's look for the dark spaces. And of course, underneath the le underneath the eave there uh, is a, is the darkest. The window is dark. And so I'm using just that flat tip stick uh, and kind of intentionally being very loose with this drawing. So I just continue to tip and this is sped way up. Uh, you see the lines I'm getting are very imperfect, very loose. It's a little trellis, uh, some of the bushes. And when I dip my pen, I don't have a lot of control. So like the top of the bushes, I wouldn't want that dark line on the top. It's okay on the bottom, but uh, it's not an imperfect tool as I stick in the into the ink. So I continue to go around the drawing, just laying out the darks prior to uh, adding a, a wash to it. But the purpose of this too is getting these scribbly lines that are loose and uh, that you can't get with a, a fine tipped quill pen or uh, a, a fine tipped marker because they're blunt and rough. That's kind of the intent of this. So in this case, I went in for a little bit more detail that don't do. Uh, wait till the very end. I added that little bit on the door and that. That's at the end. Okay, so now we're going to start our watercolor wash. I have my paint laying in front of me. Um, and I'm going to start with a sky with just a blue. That's a, uh, a manganese type blue over everything because everything's going to be dark. Uh, a little burnt sienna. On the roof, uh, I thought the white would look a little bland. So I'm also using sepia. I keep a little bit of lights in there, but I'm just going around with a first wash and uh, just laying in some. There was a little edit error there. I replayed a bit. Uh, I'm learning this edit software. <laughs> Okay, so it's just kind of a gray. You can see that the paper is angled. This Canson's XL will take a bit of a wash. And I'm just kind of laying in the values. Now we go into the greens. I have uh, Quinn Gold and Arielin and a Windsor Blue Deep, Windsor Blue Red Shade, sorry. Uh, so I just create a, a mix of greens in there and just go around and get the first wash. Here's some cadmium red. You can see the little red plants. So while it's wet, they kind of blend in and bleed uh, nicely. Here's some cadmium yellow for the same thing. Uh, the paper is damp, so it's going to uh, bleed and, and soften. Oh, I forgot that other building in there, so I'm going to go in and just add some different color to it to make it a little more interesting. Again, you can see I, I am not going for detail. This is no expert painting. On the roof, I put in burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. Okay, so now the first wash is done and I'm going to, uh, yeah, you can see that. How the bushes bled a little bit and I have a little drip in those 
which is nice. Uh, I hit it with the dryer. You can see the paper's puckering a little bit, which is fine. That's part of this paper, but it doesn't get damaged. So I like these little defects in the, it makes it interesting. Um, so everything's dry now. And so I'm kind of going in now with a little bit more detail. And that's where I should have used the, uh, at this point is when the pen is more appropriate. Okay, so now I'm looking for only the darks. There's a little uh, sign on the sign there. There's some words, uh, you know, I don't need to paint what the words say. So now I'm going in with my sharp, fine, like number four uh, watercolor brush. Now I'm adding detail. I could use a pen for this, but in this case, I'm using the fine tipped brush. Just random scriggly lines, uh, adding detail with the brush rather than a pen. I see underneath that roof line is dark. Uh, there's some of the rafters in there that I kind of accentuate a little bit, but there's the dark underneath the roof. And now I'm looking for the dark on that second building and some of the supports and little details. I go back to the brush with a lighter green. Well, let's see. No, this is the little bit darker green, a little bit more of the three colors, just to make it more interesting. Keep the colors changing. This is more Quinn Gold, and I'm just dotting in the underside dark parts of those bushes. Keeping things changing, keeping things mixing. Now I scratched in with that stick uh, the bushes. See, I got a little vertical lines in there. I just kind of lifted in some. Here I'm just adding another value to that building because it's on the shaded side just to make it change it up. And following the bushes. Okay, that's about the end of the painting now. Let's take a little closer look. Um, again, it is what it is. Uh, you can see a little of the scratches of the bushes. Uh, the lines are not perfect by intention. There is, uh, you know, you can see some of the rough lines of the siding and the roof. There was some little texture. Um, the details of the little door and the other far roof and the puddles of the, the bushes here uh, kind of bled down. So here I'm just kind of taking that puddle out and just kind of put, you know, grounding those bushes. It kind of looks interesting. And so it is what it is. Uh, that was very interesting and I hope you enjoyed it. Well, there you have it. Uh, it was very rough. Uh, I'm learning the process. We, uh, we, completed this uh, little drawing. Uh, it wasn't intended to be a masterpiece. It was intended to be showing you the, uh, the rough sketchiness and the freedom you have from using simple sticks or twigs that you might find and creating something. Uh, the next video I do, I'm going to do the same one again. And of course, we'll, uh, hopefully the video production will improve and that the actual results. I'll take a little bit more time on it. This just took me a few minutes, as you could see. So uh, again, please like if you like it and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks.